Earlier this year, Canon turned heads with the EOS R7 and R10, its first RF mount APS-C cameras. The new system lets you swap lenses between full-frame and APS-C RF cameras, just like you can with its DSLRs. However, it may also spell the end of Canon's EOS M APS-C line. Today, we're looking at the higher-end $1,500 32-megapixel EOS R7. At that price, it stacks up against rivals like Fujifilm's X-T4 and the Sony A6600. Canon made some interesting design decisions on the R7 body and used a sensor that's neither stacked nor backside illuminated. However, the R7 has a strong feature set with fast burst speeds, powerful autofocus, and strong video capabilities. I checked it out with some help from my pro photographer friend, and here's what we found. The R7 isn't as pretty as the X-T4, but I like it more than Sony's boxy APS-C cameras. It's actually hefty for its size at 612 grams, not much less than the full-frame R6 and considerably more than the A6600. The big mount works with both RF and the new RF-S lenses designed for the R7. For a smallish camera, it has a deep grip that it's comfortable to use even with big lenses. There's a control dial on the front as usual, but Canon took a new tack with the rear dial. Instead of putting it in the usual spot where the on-off video switch is now found, it's well off to the left of that and in a vertical position wrapped around the joystick. I was a bit put off by that at first, but it didn't take long to get used to it and Sam noticed that it was easier to change settings or move the focus point one-handed while still keeping a solid grip. One issue is the lack of a third dial for changing things like ISO. Otherwise, the R7 handles nearly as well as Fujifilm's X-T4 and a lot better than any of Sony's APS-C cameras. The 54mm RF mount looks crazy big on the smallish body, but it lets you attach full-frame Canon RF lenses like the $2300 50mm f1.2. That's good because Canon has only two RFS lenses so far, an 18 to 150 mm f 3.5 to 6.3 and the 18 to 45 mm. Neither is fast nor particularly sharp, but they're cheap and good for casual users. If you need a faster prime lens right now, Canon's $180 50 mm f 1.8 or $500 35 mm f 1.8 macro are good options. You can also use any EF lenses you might have lying around with an adapter. The R7 has a fully articulating, very responsive 1.62 million dot display that lets you control the menu, playback, AF and other things via touch. The menus are typical Canon, which Sam actually likes, but I'm less fond of. The OLED viewfinder is a bit disappointing though. You get just 2.36 million dots of resolution compared to 3.68 million on the X-T4 and GH5 II. For things like bird shooting that require a sharp view to judge focus, that may be an issue. It has both headphone and microphone jacks, along with a micro HDMI port that's unfortunate but par for the course with APS-C cameras. Finally, it has a nice dual UHS-2 card setup for easy backups and relatively fast shooting. For a consumer-oriented camera, the R7 is a speed demon. It shoots 15 frames per second bursts with continuous autofocus using the mechanical shutter and 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter, the same max frame rates as the $6,000 R3. That makes it great for sports or wildlife shooting, particularly with the built-in 1.6x crop factor zoom. There's a caveat though. The sensor isn't particularly fast, so rolling shutter can produce skewed photos in electronic mode with fast-moving subjects. The mechanical shutter would be a good option, but it makes a loud clunking noise that could scare away that whimbrel or white-tailed deer. It will shoot a decent number of frames before they bolt though. You can get 100 shots at 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter or about 70 shots with the electronic shutter before it slows down. The buffer also clears out fairly quickly with a fast UHS-2 card. 
The R7 uses Canon's well-regarded dual-pixel autofocus system. In regular, single-point continuous AF mode, it nails shots even with fast-moving subjects. And the tracking is top-notch, requiring very little fussing. If you select a subject in any AF area mode, it'll lock on and track it tenaciously. If the subject is a human, animal, bird, or even a race car, it'll track their head, body, eyes, or the helmet of a driver. It worked reliably and rapidly for myself and Sam, keeping kids, cats, and other quick-moving subjects in focus. Overall, the AF is right up there with Sony and superior to Fujifilm and Nikon. As for stabilization, the R7 has a 5-axis system that's effective for photos, reducing shake up to 8 stops with select lenses. That allowed me to take sharp shots down to an eighth or even a quarter of a second. Image quality is greatly aided by the new sensor's high megapixel count and Canon's color science. Compared to the usual 24 megapixels, 32 provides a noticeable jump in sharpness and gives the ability to crop in. JPEG quality is the best of any APS-C Canon camera yet, with sharper, more natural images than the 32 megapixel M6 Mark II. Sam said he took several studio photos that he could have given to the client as JPEGs with no processing. Canon offers both lossy and non-lossy compressed 14-bit RAW files. Both deliver good dynamic range with the ability to retain detail in high contrast scenes. It doesn't quite hold up to Nikon's ZFC, but it's not far off. The R7 has decent but not amazing low light powers with usable images up to ISO 6400 or even ISO 12800 with good exposure. Sony's APS-C cameras are a bit better in that regard, but the resolution is also lower. For video, the R7 is now among the best APS-C cameras, including the X-T4, and it has pulled away from Sony's APS-C cameras, which lack 10-bit high frame rates and other key features. You can shoot pin-sharp super-sampled 4K using the entire sensor width at up to 30 frames per second. It also offers 4K at 60 frames per second using either line skipping or a 1.8 times crop. Both modes are softer but usable for most projects. Canon's C-Log3 or PQ HDR video can be shot with 10-bit color for increased dynamic range. Canon has some guidelines on overheating, but I never ran into any warnings even on several warm days. The oversampled 4K at 30 frames per second is the most demanding, but Canon says you can shoot at least an hour straight in that mode without any issues. As with photos, video is sharp and color accurate with Canon's trademark warm skin tones. C-Log3 is easy to color grade and offers extra dynamic range for tricky, contrasty shooting situations. I wouldn't push the ISO to more than 3200 in low light situations for video as noise starts to become a serious issue. With in-body stabilization and a flip-out display, the EOS R7 is a good vlogging camera. However, you'll need to avoid jerky movements, particularly in the oversampled mode, to avoid rolling shutter. You'll also need a fairly wide lens due to the crop. The two kit lenses barely do the job at the 18mm wide end, particularly with enhanced video stabilization turned on. With the $1,500 R7, Canon has largely nailed its first stab at an APS-C RF mount camera. Canon's main APS-C competition is the $1,600 Fujifilm X-T4 and $1,400 Sony A6600. Panasonic's $1,700 GH5 II is another option with a smaller sensor, and you can actually find several full-frame cameras cheaper, including the $1,300 Nikon Z5 and Canon's own $1,000 EOS RP. The new EOS R10 is less capable, but also much less expensive at $980. What's attractive about the R7 is that Canon has put in all its latest tech from models like the R3, delivering a speedy and dependable camera that's surprisingly easy to use. Samuel, who works exclusively with Sony gear, put it best. He said that Canon is closing in rapidly on Sony's technological lead, and if Sony doesn't respond, it could quickly lose his business. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and for more on cameras and other tech, check out Engadget.com.